Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course that will show you how to use your web hosting panel, in this case, the cPanel, which is what the majority of web hosting companies use. And we're going to show you how to use it to effectively run your website. See, what I've seen over the years is a lot of people tend to forget how powerful cPanel really is. And in doing so, they often go about buying fancy scripts that cost a lot of money and don't realize that they can use cPanel for free to do the exact same thing. So what I'm going to do in this video course is to cover several things that are crucial to running your website. So this is video number one, the introduction to cPanel. So the premise is this, there are so many cPanel videos out there on YouTube that cover basic features of cPanel. But the problem is that they never really dive into the core of what cPanel really offers. And that is my goal in this video course. So this video course is not only going to show you the features of cPanel that you can use for your website, but also parts of it that can really help you truly take your business, take your website to the next level of success. And it's not just about maintaining your website and having email accounts or things like that, but really taking it to the next step. So here's a quick overview of what we're going to talk about in this video course. This is of course, video number one, video number two is how to use the video tutorials feature. Now, because we're not really going to cover the basic, features and all of that, I want to point you to this place because that way you can always refer back to it if you need to. And in this particular video, I'm also going to show you how to change the layout and design of the cPanel because there are different layouts. So some of you might be seeing a certain layout, whereas some of you might be seeing a different layout. And I want you to know that they're all the same. The only difference is usually the icon that is used. So as long as you look at the words, the words are the same. So I want to make sure that I cover that so you don't get lost along the way. And just be aware that it might look slightly different. Video number three, we're going to talk about how to create and insert data into a MySQL database. A MySQL database is a standard database that pretty much most all PHP scripts or web scripts use. Now, there are videos that show you how to create MySQL databases, but there are not a lot of videos that show you how to actually edit the database. Because this can actually come up at a later date where knowing how to do this actually is very, very crucial and a very good thing to know. So that if you do run into problems, you can actually fix them by yourself. Video number four, we're going to talk about how to use AW stats, which is a statistics program that analyzes and shows you what is happening inside of your website. And we'll talk about how to apply it to your business. Video number five, we're going to talk about what is Softaculous and how to use it. Some of you might see that you have a software program called Fantastico. If you still do, Keep in mind that Fantastico has been no longer supported. It has been replaced by a program called Softaculous. And we'll talk more about that and how it helps you and how it benefits you and how it can help you run your business. Video number six, we'll talk about how to set up an error and redirect page. The reason why you're going to need to have this set up is over time, you're going to set up pages, you're going to set up posts you're going to delete those posts and pages. And if Google has indexed that page, for example, and somebody clicks on that page, they're going to see an error page. And guess what? Most likely you have lost that potential subscriber, potential fan, or even potential buyer. So in that case, you're going to make sure that you want to redirect all of your error pages to your front page or any page that you desire to do. So we'll talk about that in video number six, video number seven, we'll talk about how to use file manager effectively. Believe it or not, you're not going to need to have any fancy FTP programs to upload files like videos, zip files, or any files. So I'm going to show you how to use file manager so that you can pretty much do everything within cPanel if you understand how to do it right. 
Then of course, video number eight, we're gonna talk about email authentication. This prevents people from abusing your email address. And I'll show you how this works, why you need it, and all of that in that particular video. And of course, last but not least, I'll talk about how to backup and restore your website, which is crucial. There are many different scenarios, many different situations that you need to be aware of to protect yourself. Because what, guess what? Setting up a website, not having it backed up, not being able to restore it, it's a nightmare. You've spent hours, days, months, even sometimes years or even decades on your website. You want to make sure that you have a backup copy to be able to restore it if you need to do so. And there are other cases as well. For example, let's say you are using a web host and the web host goes bankrupt. You know, th there are many different situations beyond just the basics. And I want to make sure that I cover that so that you're aware and you protect yourself. So obviously what you need is you're going to need to have cPanel. So that's it. Let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two and we're going to talk about how to use the video tutorials feature or how to get access to the video tutorials and we'll talk a little bit more about the layout and all that so that we can get on the same page. So not all cPanel users are aware that uh, you can actually get access to the video tutorials. cPanel itself actually offers you a lot of basic tutorials within its website so that you'll get access to understanding, okay, how do I use this feature or how do I use that feature? Because we're not going to be able to cover every single feature in this video course. In fact, what I'm trying to do is cover videos that are really not covered, more in-depth views rather than just how to use cPanel in general. So once you log in, what you need to do is scroll down all the way down to the bottom and click on documentation and at this page you will be able to access the video tutorials and as you can see there are a variety of different types of documentation like videos and also written documentation. Now it, it used to be in the past where cPanel would add the video tutorials inside of the cPanel but now it is actually on the outside. So I want to make sure that you understand that so you know where to go if you ever need to get access to some basic video training. Now what I want to talk about is the user interface. Some of you will have different user faces than what you're seeing on the screen here and that typically is because of the style. So you can actually change the style. So most of you will have something that looks like this. And it really depends on your web hosting company. Some web hosting companies will actually customize the cPanel with their own user interface, with their own icons, and all of that. Now, what usually holds true and stays the same is the actual words on the sections and on the actual icons. So the icons will be slightly different. And the reason why I'm going over this with you is because some people might be confused because it's, it looks a little bit different. So what you can do is up at the top, you can click on this little person here and click on change style. Now, if you click this, you will be sent to this page. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so that you can see it much, much clearer. So there are different styles and different skins as we call them. And the basic one looks like this. And then we have the dark version. But if you'll notice, the icons are very, very similar and very much the same. The only difference is the background. So the light version, the same as well. So I would say the majority of you probably have something like this. Now this is the very old style. Some of you will have this and you'll see this, but it's all the same. But if you notice the similarities is the section name and then of course the actual name of the option. So for for example, file manager will always be file manager and so forth. So let's say for example, I'm going to go back up here and currently I am on the retro style, 
But let's say that I am going to use the basic style. So all you have to do is look through the styles that you want, click on apply to the one that you want, and it'll reload with that style. And that's it. Now if we go back to the main screen where all of the options and the features are located, you will see this. So like I said, depending on the style that you choose, it might look slightly different. But at the end of the day, typically the things that do not change are the actual titles of the options. Like file manager is going to be file manager across the board. Now you're going to see different sections. Some of these sections will be different. Some, as you can see, you can actually move these sections around. So I can move this section further down here. So just keep in mind that yours might be a little bit lower, yours might be higher. So really depending on the web hosting company, some will leave it at default and some will get all fancy and move things around and customize it with their own logo. But it's all the same thing at the end of the day, unless you're using a web hosting company that is not using cPanel, which are very far and few. So let me just run through real quick. So you have files, you have file manager, you have images, you have directory privacy, which enables you to tell the system who can actually access certain directories. We have FTP accounts. We have backup, backup wizard, which will show you how to use later on. We have disk usage, which will show you how much disk space you have left. And then of course you have databases, which is PHP MyAdmin, which is where we're going to actually look at the database. But first you'll need to create a database first, which you can do either here or here. You don't really need this. And these are for advanced users here. Then you have domain names such as site publisher, add-on domains, subdomains, redirects, and more. We're not really going to cover this, but subdomains, as you know, it's, it's basically adding a keyword dot your domain.com. So it's going to be a subdomain of the domain. And then of course you have email, which you're going to be able to create email accounts here. You're going to be able to create autoresponders. And in this case, the sense of autoresponder is just going to respond with an email. So you could set up an email address and tell people, Hey, email this address and you will be sent an automatic response, an email with a secret code or something. You could do that. You could also forward all email from one email to another email here. We have email authentication, which we'll talk about more later. And we'll have spam assassin, which will enable you to protect your email address from spam. Then we have metrics like AW stats. There's other metrics as well, but these are different types of stats. And then of course you have security and then IP blocker allows you to block IP addresses and hotlink protection is great as well. So if you click on hotlink protection, what this will allow you to do is say, okay, I've uploaded a bunch of zip files and I don't want so-and-so some other website linking to the zip files and then getting people to download the zip files. So you can actually prevent other websites from linking to you and basically essentially using up your bandwidth. Then you have software, which the majority of these you will not really use. You will run into the soft tack list, which we'll talk about later down the road. And then of course you have advanced options like cron jobs, which you will usually set up whenever you install a web script and all these other things you won't really use as much. You will use error pages, which we'll show you at a different video as well. Then we've got preferences, which is just change style, change language and all of that, change your password. And then of course you have soft tackless. Hello and welcome back. This is video number three, and we're going to talk about how to create a MySQL database. And then we'll talk about, in addition to that, how to insert data into a MySQL database, how to look at a database, and how to understand the basics of it so that if you ever need to do this in the future, you can. So when it comes to installing a MySQL database, it's actually a very, very easy thing to do. It's simply click, click, and a few clicks, and you're done. And I'll show you exactly 
the step-by-step -step process of doing that. However, that said, how do you go about inserting data into the database if you ever need to do that? Well, this is often underutilized, uh, but needed in the long term whenever you're running your website. So with that said, let me go ahead and show you how. So to create a MySQL database, it's super easy. Let's start at the top. So make sure that you're logged into your cPanel. And what you want to do is scroll downwards and look for databases. If it's different, then basically what you want to do is look for the MySQL database wizard. And this will walk you through step by step. It's the easiest way to go. So first things first, click on this. And then it's going to ask you what you want to name your database. Now, this right here is going to be your domain name. So it's going to be different for different people. And you don't have to worry about that. So just enter a database name. So we'll say DB. And this could be anything you want. You just need to remember what it is. Click on Next Step. And then you want to create a username. So the username or the user has access to the database. So this is separate. So you're creating a username and then you're creating a separate database so that user has access to that user. All right. So let's put that in here. We'll just say user one. And then of course you want to do a password. And what I usually like to do is click on password generator because then you choose a very complex password. So you can click generate password here. I'm going to pause this video right now and create a random password and we'll copy it down here. So once you're done with that, you just click on the checkbox that says I have copied this into a safe place and I am ready to use the password and then it automatically enters it here. So as you can see, it is a very strong password and we click create user. The next step is step three is to add the user to the database. And to do that, all we have to do is click on all privileges and click next step. And that's it. So now what you need to do is hopefully you have saved the password to a very safe place. Usually what I do is I open up notepad and then I save it here. Now, in addition to that, I usually try to save this right here. So, if you're installing a web script, typically what it'll, it'll do is it'll ask you for your database name. And the database name is the full text between these quotation marks. So I'm going to copy that over here. So that's the database name. So I usually do db equals this and then the user equals this. And keep that in a safe place. So as you can see, that's how easy it is to create a MySQL database. Now what I want to do is click on return to MySQL databases. And if we scroll down, we can see that the database has been created. Now, if I go back to the outside here and I'm going to click on the logo and that just brings me back to the home page, I'm going to go back down and look for PHP my admin. What this allows you to do is it allows you to take a peek at the database itself. Now I will warn you and I will say that do this very, very cautiously because any mess up, you could potentially mess up your whole site. But I wanted to show you this because sometimes if you have basic detective skills, you'll be able to kind of get an idea of what's going on inside the database. So if you click on PHP my admin, it'll open up and it will allow us to edit specific databases. Now, obviously you want to find the database that you just named. So in this case, it was the DB base. So it's this one right here and we can click on here. So we can see that there are no tables found. And the reason why is it's an empty database, right? But let's say, for example, that we choose a different database that has data inside of it. So what I've done is I've gone into a WordPress site database. In this case, I'm not going to show you the username and password on all that, but I want to show you some of the basics. So 
whenever you install a WordPress site, for example, it will have, you know, install plugins and all of that. And sometimes you'll see plugin database tables inside of here. So sometimes you can actually edit the data that is inside of these tables. But if you're just curious, just come in and take a look and see what happens and see inside of it. Now, obviously, I would be very, very careful if you are editing a site that you really care about. But by doing this and just looking at it, not really changing anything, this really gives you an idea of what is happening on the back end of your website. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is because in the past I used to do this and whenever I came across an error or maybe there was something on the site that I couldn't change on the front end, sometimes I would go in the back end, like right here, let's say WP comments, for example. You could see comments and all that here. So what I'm showing you this is the you can actually replace existing data with data that you want. And just coming through here and being able to see what's happening on the back end really allows you to see what is happening in your site. Now, this is very useful just in case you get locked out, especially if you get locked out of your website and you have to change your username and password, but it just won't let you in. So what you could easily do is you could come down here and go under WP users and then just change the password inside here. So that's why I'm showing you this is because there are potential opportunities in the future if something bad happens that you could potentially come in and get things fixed. But obviously, if you don't know what you're doing, then you will need to consult someone that does. But hopefully that gives you a better understanding on how MySQL databases work when you create them and then when they begin to populate. Everything happens right here. Hello and welcome to video number four. In this particular video, you're going to learn how to use AW Stats, which is built in to the cPanel, and how to apply it to your business. Essentially, knowing what goes on in your website is crucial. And we'll discuss about what the differences are between AW Stats and Google Analytics. Uh, Google Analytics typically gives you a more granular view of what's going on in your business. But that said, not everybody uses Google Analytics. Not everyone uses that at the right time. So the nice thing about cPanel is your AW stats is always running. And there are specific golden nuggets that it gives you that Google Analytics does not really give you. And we'll dive into that further. So in other words, not only will you be given an overview of AW stats, but You'll learn different features of AW Stats that, that if used correctly can actually go beyond and increase your website traffic and protect you as well. You'll also learn how people find you, what keywords they are using to type in search engines and how to use that to your advantage. And you'll also learn who is linking to you for good reasons or even bad reasons so that you can protect yourself. So we're going to take a little bit of out-of-box thinking here and show you some things that you may never have seen before. So to access AW Stats, all you need to do is go back to your main screen, as you can see here, and scroll down. And under Metrics, you'll see AW Stats. Now, I want to briefly talk about these other metrics. The visitors basically just tell you every single IP address and every single file that they are accessing. So if you want a granular view of what is happening detail-wise, what people are accessing, what IP addresses are accessing your site, you would go here. So that would be probably a little bit more overwhelming to the average Joe. Now, that's there, though, if you want to do that. And then, of course, bandwidth just tells you how much bandwidth or how many files in the metric of like megabytes or gigabytes, your prospects and site visitors are actually using. So if you have a lot of videos, you have thousands of gigabytes of videos and they're 
hundreds of people visiting it per day, it gives you a better idea of how much your website is actually using. So in addition to that, you can click on AW Stats. Now I'm not gonna show you, otherwise it'll show you my domain, but if you click on that, it'll give you the option to either choose the the regular yourdomain.com or the SSL version of yourdomain.com. So, and then of course you're gonna see your monthly history over time, what is happening on your website. The days, the months, which months are potentially getting more traffic. So that's something that I would highly advise you to really start looking into. Like what days are your visitors reacting? Are there certain days that are better than others? Because it's gonna be different for different websites. And knowing that information is actually gonna really help you increase your traffic and potentially increase your sales if you're running a business. We've got days of week, we've got hours, which is crucial. You might notice that you might be getting more people at a specific hour, specific time. And knowing this data is important because you can connect it to your email autoresponder system and email people at that specific hour. So really taking yourself out of the box and understanding what is happening here, how are people interacting with your website is crucial. And then we have locales, which is basically where people are coming from, the different countries, different locations, and all of that. We have different hosts, we have different authenticated users, and then what kind of robots are visiting your site? Is Google coming to your site and indexing your site? Is Yahoo, is other search engines doing that? And then the visits, duration, how long are people actually staying on your site? Are they staying a few seconds? If they are, that might not be a good sign. Maybe you can look at your content and see why. If they're staying a long, long time on specific pages, then why is that? Is it because their videos, are they intriguing? What is that? So use this data to your advantage. You can see file types. What kind of files are they accessing? Are they accessing regular pages? Are they downloading files? Are they downloading a lot of zip files or video files or, or whatever and then different pages what kind of pages are they accessing what kind of operating systems are they using what kind of browsers are they using and you can also see where they're coming from so you can see what search engines are sending traffic to you and who is linking to you what are what files are they linking to and this is a great way to figure out who is linking to you are they doing it for good reasons and they're maybe recommending you or are they linking to you and trying to hijack your files and maybe they found like a loophole in your files and they're you know sharing it with everybody else illegally you can find that information and find what is happening within aw stats for that you can also see the search phrases, like what kind of search phrases are people typing in to Google to find you. So this is really good to have. So we got search key phrases, which are phrases, a bunch of keywords put together, or we have keywords in the top 25 right here. And then of course you can see the different types of browsers people are using with different types of support. Now, whether that is useful for you, that might be, that might not be. But at the end of the day, what I found is from here up to here usually is very, very uh, good golden nuggets that you could potentially use in other areas of your business. So that's basically an overview of AW stats and why it is good for you. But at the same time, definitely install Google Analytics and look at both, compare both and see what is happening in your business and your website. Hello and welcome to video number five. And in this particular video, you're gonna learn what is Softaculous and how to use it. Softaculous replaced Fantastico, which is basically a popular suite of software scripts that you can build into your website. Things like WordPress, Joomla, if you want a forum, you can build forums. There are a lot of many different free scripts that you have access to that you do not have to spend extra money for. They're all built in. So in other words, it gives you access to things like WordPress, blogs, bulletin boards, 
even support help desks, and more. So you'll be given an overview of this suite and how to use it properly, and we'll show you how to install things like WordPress in a few clicks of your mouse. So where it's located can differ from different people, but for the most of you, it should be located somewhere down near the bottom. So if we keep scrolling down, we'll see it here. So we can see that it says the Softaculous Apps Installer. So what's nice about this is you have access to tons of scripts that you could potentially use. And just be aware that you want to pick and choose what you want. It's super easy to go trigger happy and try to install as much as possible. But just keep in mind that the more you install, the slower your website is. So pick and choose wisely, maybe one or two or three max. So let me just do a quick run through here. So we've got blogs, we've got microblogs, and if you click these links down below, these are categories, and these are all the scripts. So if you're not really sure which one to choose, if you click on blogs here, you'll actually be able to see all the blogs. So as we can see here, we've got WordPress, we've got open blog, we've got serendipity, and there's a lot more. I'm not going to go through every single one, but if you click on blogs, it'll categorize it. And then you can look through, you've got micro blogs, we've got portals or content management systems like Joomla and all of that. There's also specialized ones for real estate, and more. We've got forums. So let's say, for example, you want a community. You want to create a community. Click forums. We've got PHPBB. We've got SMF. And we've actually tried SMFs. SMF is really good. PHPBB is good. Uh, BB Press is also good. And we have image galleries. Now keep in mind, if you're installing something like WordPress, you don't really need all of these. You can actually create all of these within WordPress by using WordPress plugins. And then we have wikis, we have social networking, we have calendars, we have analytics, we have e-commerce. So there are tons and tons of stuff in here, but at the end of the day, the best way to know exactly what to install is to figure out, okay, what is my plan? What is my vision? does it actually match what I'm trying to do and then go from there. Now in this particular video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to install. So I'm going to click on WordPress here and you're going to see within a few clicks and a few things that we need, need to enter, we're going to create a WordPress site really, really fast. So all you need to do is simply scroll down and click on install now. And then it's going to say software setup. So you want to choose your protocol, which if you're using a SSL certificate, you want to use HTTPS slash colon slash slash. And then if you're not, then use one of these two and then one of these. And then of course you want to choose your domain name. And the reason why this is listed is because if you have a subdomain name, you can actually install it in there. And then of course the directory, if you leave this blank, it's going to install it at yourdomain.com. If you enter a directory, it's going to install it within a, a directory within yourdomain.com. So if it's WP, for example, it'll be yourdomain.com slash WP. So if somebody goes to yourdomain.com, they're not going to see the WordPress site. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. So once you've done that, then what you want to do is enter your admin account. So your admin username and password. Now I will say by default, it does have you enter admin, but it's highly advised not to use the word admin because most WordPress blogs use that. And it's a, it's super easy for people to hack into your site. So make sure you change something that is not admin and not even any words inside of your domain name. So we'll just do something like that. And then of course we got the password. And then of course you'll enter your email. You'll enter your site language and then you'll choose what you want here. You can always choose the theme later. We'll just select this here and you can enter the email details that you want it sent to. So you have it, that information in the future and you click install and that's it. So that's how easy it is to literally install the scripts. 
If you were to do this manually and install WordPress manually, it would actually take you literally about 30 minutes if you knew what you were doing. If you didn't know what you were doing, it would probably take you about an hour to do, even though they say it's a five minute install. With Softaculous, it skips the process and it allows you to install softwares, a variety of different softwares really, really fast. So hopefully that opens your eyes to the potential software and scripts that you can install really, really fast. Welcome to video number six. And in this particular video, we're going to talk about how to set up an error and redirect page. So did you know that you could be losing traffic when people land on certain areas of your website that don't exist? In other words, over the time and over the years of maintaining your website, you'll have pages and elements, videos, zip files, whatever, that will disappear on your website. And what will happen over the years is they will be indexed by Google. And if somebody clicks on that through Google and they come to your website, it will lead to a what we call a 404 error page. Now think about it for just a second. If you were that prospect and you clicked on a link and it went to a 404 error page, what does that first impression give you? Most likely it gives you the impression that the site is not maintained, or maybe it's not really very professional, right? In that case, what it'll do is it'll be detrimental to your reputation. So you don't want that. Instead, what you want is you want people to be redirected to either a page that actually works or a specific page that you want all the traffic to be redirected to. And this is where the 404 error page comes in. Fortunately, on the cPanel hosting panel, you can actually specify where you want all this traffic to go. So in other words, what if you could redirect all that traffic back to either the main page or a working area of your website? Well, that's what you can do. And in this video, we're going to show you how to create that 404 error page. And we'll talk about the other types of error pages as well. So what you want to do is find the title that says error pages. So don't worry about the icon. We can even do a search on that. So we can do a search on error. There we go. Uh, that's not the metrics though. It's, it's not going to be under there. It's going to be error pages, or it might be four or four zero four pages. So we have edit common error codes or show all HTTP error code. The 404 is the one that's not found. So that's what we're talking about. Anytime we delete a file, a page or anything like that, that's generally where somebody's going to come in to access your site from Google or, or a site that has been indexed. And the next thing after that is to enter some HTML code that tells the system to redirect to whatever page that you decide. Now, I'm not going to expect you to understand HTML code. I could go through here and tell you to pause it and just copy it. You could do that. Or you can simply go to google.com and do a search for HTML meta redirect, get the code, and then just enter the code as you can see here. And sometimes you'll have stuff in the body. You can remove that. You can change the title, but basically it's HTML. There's a head. There's a title and then there's meta head body. So you can pause the video and just do that or do the other way, but just make sure that the, when it says meta refresh content equals zero, zero means that it'll redirect immediately. If there's like a number in there, it'll wait how many seconds. So if there's number five in there, it'll wait five seconds before it actually redirects. And then of course, as you can see here, I'm telling it to redirect to Google, google.com. But in your case, it's going to be HTTP colon slash slash your domain dot com. And that's what it's going to be. And when you're done, you click on save. And any time anyone goes to your domain dot com slash some random URL, and the, instead of going to an error page, they are redirected to your main page or whatever URL that you want to redirect them to. And that's it. This is going to be video number seven. 
And in this particular video, I'm going to show you how to use the file manager effectively. FTP is not the only way to upload your files. You might have heard of FTP software, which is basically a file transfer protocol software that enables you to transfer files. Now, if you're not aware of this and it sounds a little bit complex, then don't worry about that. That's the whole goal of this particular video. In fact, uh, cPanel's file manager not only allows you to upload your files, everything from zip files and all of that, but you can also delete files. You can create directories, you can create and extract zip files, you can even edit files within this program and so much more. So by showing you this, I think this will simplify your life a little bit. And this is great in addition to that, especially if you need to install web scripts like PHP scripts. And best of all, you can do it without any fancy software like we talked about earlier, the FTP software. And you can do it on any computer that has access to the internet. So let me go ahead and jump right in and show you how it works. So you should see the file manager at the very top. The icon might be different, like I said earlier, but the file manager name will be the same. So click on that. It's going to open up a separate window. And I will warn you, you have to be very, very careful when you move your mouse because you could potentially move a file, a folder into the wrong folder or what have you. So just keep that in mind. Be very, very careful while you're in here. So right now I'm in a website and most you're going to see all these different folders here. The key to remember is that some of you will see public underscore HTML and some of you might see HTTP docs. Now, if you're unsure about where the file should be located, you'll need to contact your web hosts because some web host companies will put it in a certain directory. But for the majority of you, it should say public underscore HTML. So this should be the magic folder that holds all the files that show up on your website. All of the rest of the folders here may pertain to your email system, to uh, files that are related to other than what people actually see. So we're going to click this here. And right off the bat, you see a bunch of WP dash, which basically tells you there's WordPress uh, site inside here. But if we scroll down here, I want to show you there are a number of things that we can do. So inside this folder, we can create a new folder. So if we want to do that, we can click folder and we can type the new folder. So create new folder. And what we could do in this folder is we could double click it just like you would on a PC or a Mac computer where we're creating a folders. So same thing. But in this case, we can upload files. So we can click on upload and you can drag and drop files in here, or you can simply click select file and upload files via there. So in this case, I can select an image, click open and that'll upload the image. So when I'm done, I click go back to the new folder and we can see that it is there. Now we could select a file and you can see that other options show up. So we select a file. We can also download it. So we could click download and it would download it to our computer. So if you had a zip file or a video file that you have, you want to download it to your computer, you can do that. You can also delete the file. We can also compress it. So let's say we have a good number of files that we want to compress into a zip file. We can select those files or select that folder and click compress. We can click zip compress and it'll compress it as you can see here. So we can click that, click download and there we go. We can also delete files. So you can select a file, click delete, skip trash and permanently delete files. Or if we unselect it, click confirm, we could do that. 
We can also rename. So you could rename the file here. We can also edit. Now it is an image file, so we can't necessarily edit the image file on here. We can only edit files like text files and things like that. So let's say, for example, we'll click File, New File, and we'll just name this file.txt. You can name it whatever you want it to, to be. So we'll do that and we'll click on edit. And now you can see that we're actually able to edit this particular file because it's a text file. You can also edit HTML files. So I could even do file.html. And if you're not familiar with what HTML files are, they're basically web based files. So we could click that, we could click HTML editor, click edit, and then you'll see the HTML editor. And then of course you can create text and increase the size and, and all that. So we'll exit out of that. And you can also set permissions. What permissions means is you're telling the system, okay, as a user, these are my abilities, these are my rights, I can edit the file. But the world cannot. But if you wanted the world to edit, world meaning everybody else to do it, then you could do that. I would not recommend that. You're going to run into the situation, especially when you install scripts, especially when you upload the scripts and it's going to ask you to change the permissions for certain files. So that's good to know right there. So that's pretty much it as far as file manager goes. And as long as you understand those basics, and understand that it operates very, very similarly to a Mac computer or a PC, then you're good to go. Welcome back. This is video number eight. And in this particular video, we're going to talk about email authentication. It's about time that you learn the basics of protecting your email box from spam. So in this video, you're going to learn how to use cPanel and tell cPanel to do just that and authenticate all the emails that are coming out of your domain as legitimate emails. And what this does is it protects you from other people abusing your email. And I'll show you in just a second how all this works. So there are two things that you want to do. You want to, of course, scroll down and find the email section. But after that, you're going to want to do two things. And the first thing you want to do is spam assassin which will basically protect you from spam, which will open that up in a new window. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to do what we call email authentication. And we'll open that up into a new window as well. So let's start with the spam assassin first. Spam assassin basically is a mail filter. It will filter out your email. You have the ability to set it at a high and a low so by default, it's going to do from 1 to 10. So default, it's going to do 5. The higher the number, the more conservative the setting. So you could get really granular and really block everything out. But I would caution you at that same point because at the end of the day, some of the good emails might be triggered as spam. And I've seen that over the years. Now, you have the option to auto-delete spam. Personally, I would not do that. Because, like I said, if it is good email that is triggered as spam, it will auto-delete. You'll never get it. And if you rely on your email and your website and your business and all that to make money, then that's not a good thing. So, usually I leave it at 5. And you can click Configure to configure it further. And the only reason why you would actually need to do this is if you happen to be getting bombarded with spam from a specific person you can enter that information here or if you have you know a whitelist for from a certain domain you can do that as well but typically the first step is all you really need so now let's talk about email authentication so let me read this to you so you understand what it's about email authentication helps prevent spam how well basically it in what a lot of spammers do is they will hijack your domain or they'll email from your domain or they'll pretend to do so. 
So what this does is it prevents spammers from forging emails that claim to be your domain. And you want to protect your domain as much as possible because if you end up on a blacklist, that can be potentially very, very harmful for your email deliverability. Meaning if you're emailing from that email, when the ISPs like Gmail, all these other internet service providers or email service providers see your email, they'll put it straight to the spam box and you don't want that, right? So you want to protect as much as possible. So best to do that by clicking enable for the DKIM and then you can enable the SPF here. So doing those two items will help you greatly as far as protecting your email and for protecting your email as far as the reputation goes in relation to the email service providers and to keep your domain whitelisted. Welcome to video number nine and congratulations, you've reached the end of this course. We're going to talk about how to backup and restore your websites. Have you ever created a document and forgot to save it and you lose it? Think about that feeling. This is one of the worst feelings after you spent sometimes hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks, or even months to create that document. Well, the same goes for your website. In fact, websites are even worse because sometimes you spend months, years, or even half a decade or more maintaining your website and building it up. So if you don't have a backup of your website on a frequent basis, then you are in trouble. Now you could say, well, I'm just going to use the web host to back up my files. And that's fine, you can do it that route, but it's always good to keep a backup copy on your own computer. Because there are many different scenarios, as I specified in the previous videos, that could potentially happen. And I'm not saying this will happen to you, but I'm saying that it's potentially could happen. Whereas you could have a web hosting company go bankrupt, which has actually happened to us in the past. And they go down and something happens or something happens without your control. Or the web hosting company says you're using too much bandwidth and we're locking your website or locking it down until you pay more money or something or something happens in that realm as long as you keep a backup on a consistent basis on your own computer then you are safe now another scenario of why you would want to do this is if you wanted to back it up and then move it to a different host. You could do this as well. So let's jump right in and let me show you how it all works. So there are two different options to backup. There's a backup and there's a backup wizard. And let me explain the differences between the two. So let's just go ahead and open these two windows up. So the first thing is backup. And this is what you see here. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to download a backup onto your computer. So rather than backing it up and storing it on your server, which yes, you could download it from there, you're downloading it straight from the server to your computer. So what you would do is simply click on download a full website backup. I'm not going to do it now because this website is big, but if you click that, it'll automatically download right away. You also have the opportunity to download just the home directory. So what this enables you to do is split things up. So let's say instead of downloading the whole thing, you, you're just telling the system, oh, I just want to download what's inside the home directory. I don't want to download the emails or the everything else, the MySQL databases and all that. Now, you can also download the MySQL databases separately. Let's say that you already have everything. You just want the database. Well, that gives you the option to do that. So we could go here and click here, and it'll automatically download just the MySQL database. 
or just the email forwarders. So that's what backup is all about. Downloading it straight from the server to your computer via a zip file. Now, Backup Wizard, on the other hand, allows you to, you can either do a partial backup right here, but if you do a full backup, you can specify the backup destination, which this will basically back it up and store it on your server in a specified destination. And of course, you can enter your email address if you want it to notify you when it is complete. Now, I like to do this because it stores it on the server but when it's done, it gives you the option to actually download it to your computer as well. So you could have the option to have it on your computer and to have it on the server just in case anything were to happen. Now, in a different scenario where you would have maybe move to a different host, you can easily ask the other host to log into your cPanel and transfer your site to their server. You could either do that or you could do it yourself. I like to keep backups myself at all times. And even though they offer those services at your convenience, you never know what will happen with the web hosting company. And you never know what situation you might be in. So always keep a backup. Try to do backups at least once a week or once a month at minimum. Now, if you do the backup wizard, you've backed everything up and it is sitting in your home directory and you want to restore it, you can either ask your web hosting company to do it for you or you can do it yourself and do it really quick. You can cl simply click on restore and you can select the type that you want. So we'll do home directory. And the final step is to either choose the restore your backup Upload the file here and restore it from here. Or if it is sitting on your server, you can also ask your web hosting company and say, hey, I've got a backup sitting in the home directory. And if you would please restore it and they can do that for you. That's typically better because a lot of times web hosting companies, they'll back it up once a week or whatever. But if you have your own backup, maybe you, you did it right before you made a big change, then you can do it based on your own change. So before you do that major change, you've backed it up and you can do it from there. Otherwise, you'll have to rely on whatever the web hosting company has backed up for you.